Hi guys, might you happen to have one of these Metabone speed boosters? If you have one of these, now you can make your lenses into macro lenses. Let me show you how. Just before leaving for traveling here in Asia, I bought a new lens, an old Nikon lens, a manual lens. And on the airport of Bangkok, I realized that on that lens, I was not able to uh, focus to anything that was further than 15 meters. So my first in, uh, initial idea was, okay, this old lens is broken. Then I uh, arrived here and I noticed that my, all of my lenses were broken. So then I started thinking, okay, maybe it's not the lenses, maybe it's the adapter that is broken. I realized that there's this element inside the adapter that is rotating and it should not rotate. So then I just kind of rotate it back and suddenly all my lenses were fixed. But then I started thinking, how about if I do the opposite and rotate the um, lens element, like I offset it even more. And then I realized that all my lenses suddenly became macro lenses. So to make your lenses into macro lenses, you just need to screw this lens element in, but be careful not to scratch the lens element to the back of your lens. So now you have a couple of macro lenses. Let me share a couple of observations or tips that I found out when I was starting to play with my lenses. The first thing is that the best macro lenses are lenses that already can focus quite near. For example, this Sigma 18 to 35 without this hack can uh, focus to about 30 centimeters and with the hack it can focus about the three centimeters so it's really really close range uh, focus lens and then a couple other technical tips uh, when you're shooting very nearby all the shake of your camera is multiplied <laughs> like many folds so try to get your camera and your lens as steady as possible supporting it to whatever thing you can like to the, the surface of the table or surface of the wall so just try to emit as much shaking as possible and then you still need to do post stabilization in Premiere or whatever software you're using and then I recommend using a very small aperture because when we shoot something that is so close if we use a big aperture the depth of field will be razor thin and almost nothing is in focus so step down your lens as much as you can because then you have more focus area you will have good bokeh don't worry it's just that when you have it wide open you don't have anything else than bokeh and when you close down your lens that means that a very little amount of light is hitting your sensor so you need more light but the funny thing is that when we go when we zoom into something so small everything else becomes super big for example i have a very small led panel but that becomes like huge softbox when I'm shooting macro shots. And, the, and then another thing is that closer your light is to your subject, the stronger the light is. So my small LED panel is actually now a huge, super strong softbox. And then let's talk about a couple of observations that I made about macro shooting, like the creative side of macro shooting. The first thing is that when you shoot something so small, your subject matter must change. You have to start looking for very, very small things to shoot. And trust me, flowers are boring subjects. I started looking around like a child, um, observing a new world, and it was actually a lot of fun. I realized that I need something to, some action in my shots. So if I'm only shooting like the flowers or small objects, it's quite boring. So I realized that I need to have some kind of action. So then I decided to try out things. For example, I dropped a drop of honey to the floor and then ants started to gather around and I got a lot of interesting footage of ants. And the honey by itself was already quite interesting. It looks like jewelry. And then I dropped a bit of water and I was shooting how the water, uh, water reacts with the surface and objects that it comes by. And one thing you can do is to play around with the movement of the light. So, do you have this adapter? If you do, please test this hack and tell me in the comments how did it work. Because maybe mine is broken or maybe because this is a Nikon uh, adapter. So maybe it only works with Nikon. And then tell me what lens did you use. So we'll get a list of lenses that work. And then share this video because I want everyone to know about this hack. Everyone has this adapter because this is really cool. And subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Bye. And by the way, every time I upload a video, someone asks me, how do I do my color correction? So here's a video about that if you're interested.